Hello everyone, welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. Today's video, we are gonna tackle three common questions that I've been getting a ton lately. Starting off with, why don't we just put shoes on cows to avoid some of these problems? Another question we're gonna dive into, how much sole can you remove before it gets too thin and how do you know that you're not taking too much off? And number three, when you trim the toes, how come you cut past the white line? Doesn't that hurt the cow when you cut past the white line? All of those coming up as soon as we get this foot trimmed. All right, question one. Wouldn't it just be easier to put shoes on cows like they do horses to prevent problems like we've seen like this, where we get rocks embedded in the claw and then we have to dig them out and then they cause problems and big holes in that sole. Wouldn't it be easier just to put a horseshoe on that to protect all of that? Well, several problems with that and we're gonna address them right now. Number one, we've got a animal now with two claws. so. Trying to put a horseshoe on that may not be the best plan. Even if we could put a horseshoe on that, the white line area, or the outside wall, I should say, on a cow is very thin relative to a horse. So trying to drive nails in there to put that shoe on just wouldn't work. Another thing that would happen is we would lose the articulation that we get having two digits. That's an advantage for a cow. If we step on something that is... Uh, uneven ground, those claws can move side to side and up and down to take up that, that shock. We would lose that if we tied those two claws together. But what if we didn't do that? What if we just glued rubber blocks on like we do for injuries? Couldn't we do that? One on each claw, be simple. Put those on all four feet and then she would be padded. Well, there's some issues with that too. First and foremost, the cow's hoof grows. So what happens is, is that block actually slips down the foot as it grows. I shouldn't say it slips, it grows with the claw. So therefore that block becomes positioned incorrectly. It ends up happening is that the cows will rock back on their heels, which is no good, creating more pressure toward the heel. So if we did do this, we would have to put this block on as it grew down. We'd have to take it off, reposition, reposition, reposition. We'd have to do this many times to make sure that that block stayed in a correct position. If it didn't, we would end up with more problems than what we have already. Another thing to consider with this technique is that blocks are unreliable. We've seen them fall off before. So then we would end up with an unbalanced situation and not doing what we wanted to do anyway. The other thing we have to keep in mind here is the cost to do all this. Trying to put on eight blocks on every cow would cost roughly $100 per application. And we'd have to do that many times if we did this. So the best thing we can do is just try to make these feet and keep them in the best position possible. Now, once again, in this video, guys, you're hearing some mooing, you're hearing cows bellering in the background. That's not cows in pain or anything like that. These cows, are waiting to be trimmed. We put them in here in these pens, wait until I trim them. And they're upset because they're not out eating with those other cows. So that's why you hear that. Now let's move on to the next question. When you trim some toes, I see you sometimes cut past the white line. Isn't that the quick or the corium in there? And why aren't you hurting the cow when you do that? This demonstration is going to explain that. What we've got here is this foot. It looks as if that toe, right? That white line was right at the toe already. But I'm going to trim this foot and you're going to see that that white line is actually going to move up the foot the further I go in or the more sole that I remove. So when you see me trim that in a video and it looks like I'm cutting past that white line, that just means that that sole is plenty thick. If that were a thin sole and I were to cut past that white line, we would have problems. You can see here how that white line was right at the toe before has now moved up as I've removed those layers. The actual white line is up probably about a half an inch from the tip of that toe. I'm not gonna take all that obviously, or I will cause problems. So I'm just gonna round these off. Now this next foot, we'll do this a little different to make it a little clearer. 
Let me take a look at this foot now. We can see where that white line appears to be on this foot that I haven't trimmed yet. So I'm gonna touch this up. I'm gonna take that, make that cut right at the white line right now, and then we'll know when we trim it how much we've added with that. Now that those cuts are made, you can see where they are. Let's trim this sole and you'll watch that white line move. Another thing I failed to mention with our horseshoe question was the fact that the injuries that those horseshoes or the blocks would prevent in a given year is very small. Of the 40,000 or so feet that I trim in a year, only five to 10 puncture type injuries I'm gonna come across in that year. So to do all of that added expense and added work and risk mispositioning the blocks or causing problems, in the white line from putting a nail in improperly, the risk of that is much higher than the problems that we would solve by putting them on. So that's why we don't do those types of things. Let's finish this foot up. As we zoom in now, you can see that we've gained more, all right, on the tip of that toe. That white line has moved up the foot. The actual white line, once again, is about a half to three quarters of an inch from the tip right now. I'm obviously not gonna make that cut because then we would cause problems. So I'm gonna follow what looks to be the white line right now. And now on to our third and final question. How do you know how much sole you can remove before you cause discomfort? These nice dry tie stall cow feet are perfect examples to illustrate this. We've got this area that looks like a white chalky layer. That is an area known as pith. And what that is, that's a layer of dehydrated horn in the foot. That's the horn that would naturally slough off in, in the wild. So I can trim that off. Underneath that is a shinier layer of hydrated horn. I don't want to remove that. It's a little harder to see on uh, freestall cow's feet because they happen to have a uh, more hydrated foot, but it's the same guide. As long as I leave a little bit of pith, I know I've got good sole depth. Now let's move on and trim one more cow and kind of see how this process all works.
All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully, I cleared up some of those common questions. And until next time, thanks for watching, and we will see you all on the next one.